In today's episode, I have special guest Sheila FG. She's a strategic partner and sponsorship expert. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to reverse engineer a sponsorship because there's a lot of ways of, you know, getting a partner or a sponsor. But if we move backwards, we're going to get into the mind of Sheila here. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. Thanks so much, Jess. I'm really happy to be here. So before we even talk about sponsorships or partnerships or how to reverse engineer anything, I'm curious as to why you chose that field in the first place. Was there a catalyst or a moment in your life where all the pieces fell into place and you realized that this was something you could do? Um, kind of. So it's, I, the field kind of chose me. I was um, in a business partnership with a woman called Deanna Rogers and she got recruited to go work for D, um, Digital Marketer to run their events. And she asked me to come in and help with sponsors. So I did. And then people started seeing what I was doing. We were working on a large event called Traffic and Conversion, which gets a lot of people at it. And they started asking me if I could do it for them too. So it wasn't kind of this like business plan and laid out format. It just kind of happened organically. So you got poached, basically. Uh, other people saw that you were doing well and they wanted to use you for their business as well. Which is, bit, which, yeah. <laughs> and that's how businesses start, right? You, you have an idea you are successful at it, and then you start implementing the same methodologies and strategies and tactics for other businesses too. So you basically did the right thing, uh, which, which is a good thing. Now, I'm sure along the way, you faced some challenges as you now had more clients and you had to you know, take on more work. What kind of challenges did you find? Um, so the biggest challenge I found, and I haven't really, um, I'm still trying to, uh, overcome it is um, there's only so much work you can take on as a single person. So I tried to, you know, hire for my weaknesses. I tried to hire for, um, you know, to, to kind of clone myself and that hasn't worked. So now what I'm doing is I am, um, I put together a course and I'm teaching other people to do what I do. And hopefully I can refer out business because I literally turn business away all the time. There's not a lot of people who do what I do. And I, it's not, I don't want to be in the day to day running a sponsorships anymore either. I really want to be more on the consulting side. So that's where the struggle is at the moment. (laughs) Interesting. Something I like to ask entrepreneurs on the show, but you just basically, you know, mentioned the one that I was told by a mentor years ago is to delegate more to other people in order to scale the business up. And it sounds like you tried to do that, but it's challenging because not everyone knows what you do. So I'm actually, I'm actually curious about this. So, because this is a really tough topic, right? This, this is a very tough topic because a lot of entrepreneurs out there running a business, they don't know how to get help to make the business more successful and you're trying and you're not able to do it. So I guess the, the, my follow-up question would be, uh, have you thought about maybe hiring other event people that do the same type of work that you do, that they own their own business. And then maybe you guys can do like a commission style thing. Have you thought about that? And and that's kind of what I did a lot of. So in terms of hiring, I've had VAs, I've had partnerships with other people who do events. um, And it just, it it never seems to be um, the right fish. So I'll have somebody come on and like, and I'll give away the majority of the commission. I'm happy to. And, um, you know, it's a great conversation in the beginning and then, you know, life gets in the way for them and it just doesn't happen. So it's, it's, and, and it's kind of, um, there's, there's not many people who do what I do, but we, the, the ones I know we talk and they have the same similar experiences as well. Even going back to Deanna that I was in business with at the start of this, like when she brings, tries to bring on other people, she gets frustrated sometimes because some of them just don't perform. So it's, it, it really is like, if we can solve that, we'll, um, we can all retire, I think. It sounds like a lot of human beings in general. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not just in your industry. This is like a universal oh, yeah. thing. People, yeah. people say they're going to do one thing and they do another. So it's just, that's just the, 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 the lay of the land, right? Right. Yeah. And, and speaking of the sponsorships for these events, I'm curious how, you know, because I, I'm always trying to get sponsors for like my podcast or for like businesses that I've had partnerships. How do you go about finding the right sponsor or partner for a business that isn't really, I guess, like a Fortune 500 company, right? How do you get these sponsors for like low, like a low scale event or low scale 
business? Yeah, so you kind of have to think of it in terms of what the sponsor is looking for, and that's the whole reverse engineering. So if we um, just take an event, or we'll take your podcast as an example. So what is um, the listener of your podcast? What kind of transformation are they trying to find? What, what change are you bringing to them in what you interview people about and what you talk about yourself? So right. you take that and then you figure out, um, and I'm assuming that some of it is like a change you've gone through yourself or experience you've gone through yourself. Try and think of yourself when you were yourself in the beginning before you knew what you know today and what resources helped you do that. And then you, you start bringing those resources in to help your people as well. Um, a very simple way for like, maybe for someone like yourself, Jason, is, um, you know, what resources are you using today? Just follow your checkbook and look at like, where are you paying bills? Like what um, SaaS are you using? What are you using? So say I wanted to run a podcast, you know, what, what, right. uh, what um, if, and you were teaching a podcast on how to run a podcast, you know, you could bring all those resources in as sponsors because I need, I would need all of that stuff to get started because I wouldn't have a clue where to start. Right. And like, let's say, you know, like there's a lot of tools that I use, right? I'm project management for my technology business, um, a lot of tools for my film business, uh, tools for my writing business, you know, you name it, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm using a ton of stuff, but yep. reaching, reaching out to these companies, these are billion dollar, million dollar companies. And they're going to see my podcast has, you know, a couple hundred downloads per, per, you know, episode. It's not like, you know, Dax Shepard's armchair expert where he's got like, you know, probably 30 million downloads or whatever. So they're seeing me as like this fledgling entrepreneur who has been successful in a lot of ways, but doesn't have like a humongous following. They're like, well, why would we sponsor you? So that could go for an event. It could be for a business or a podcast. So how do you convince a sponsor that there is some quality? Uh, there's some, there's, you know, there's, there's basically a reason they should be sponsoring this. Right. And first of all, don't assume because you don't know what their goals are. They, they, you may have the exact demographic that they're trying to get in front of right now. So the, the big part is like known your avatar, known who it, who it is that is listening to your thing. And, and not just in terms of, um, you know, they're a certain age, they're a certain demographic. It's like, you know, what, what motivates them? What are they? Why are they here? What are the, what's their like desires to, to transform into whatever it is that you're teaching? Um, that might be the perfect client for them. And it doesn't have to be this big, like million dollar, five year sponsorship thing. It can be something very small and very simple. And it could even be when you start off just like an affiliate sponsorship. So if they have an affiliate program, you could sign up as an affiliate. You can still say they're, you know, sponsored by, um, you're giving out your affiliate link for them to, for your audience to, um, uh, get the resource and you know even though it's not an actual thing between you but if you start bringing them business you can say so so far I'm bringing you this much in business I'd love to like deepen this more what are your goals what are you guys trying to achieve is there any kind of synergy between the two of us that we could make something a win-win out of this it's funny that you mentioned this it's very ironic because uh, this is the first episode in a couple of months that I do not have an affiliate sponsor I just finished my my agreement with them and so I had an affiliate sponsor. They were also paying a little bit on top as like a monthly, you know, yep. per episode. So I was really happy about it, but it was internationally based. So the, the, it, was very, it was very challenging for me to get people to click on the link here in the States because it was an international company. And so I found it very challenging. And then I'm guessing they didn't get the numbers they were looking for because of the fact that I'm in the States and my audience is mostly in the States. So, you know, you know, let, let's reverse engineer this. Okay. Okay. Uh, I run a podcast that is entrepreneur, right? It's entrepreneurship based, business based. I interview people like you and yep. I also talk about things like cryptocurrency and the future in technology and health and wellness. And I attract a sponsor from an internet, a different country. And they say, we love your content. We want to sponsor you and do affiliate, you know, based thing. What, you know, how, how am I supposed to navigate through this and how am I supposed to find the right sponsor? I know you talked about the tools that I use and, mm -hmm. and things like that and the things that I teach, but I'm, I'm really, you know, for someone like me who does have a lot of things going on, how, how do I manage that myself when I may not be an expert at getting a sponsor? Um, well, you've already done it. You got one. I know it was an affiliate relationship, but you know, like, how did you do that? And how maybe could you do better with it? Like, what was the, the exit conversation or was there one? The exit conversation was that they felt as though I was not taking advantage of the affiliate 
um, income as much as I could have because they weren't providing me with maybe the right resources that I needed. I think it was a polite way of saying that we're not seeing a lot of traction from the link. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the link was getting a lot of clicks because I use Bitly. So I was able okay. to check that and I definitely yeah. got them a couple hundred links. My affiliate dashboard did have some signups. Yep. But I'm guessing they wanted some revenue from that traffic. I told them that I looked at it more as a branding and awareness type thing where like, you know, I'm getting your name out there to people that normally wouldn't see your company. And I feel that that's more powerful than clicking on the link, your name, because brand awareness is, is everything, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. But they, but they, I guess they didn't go for that angle because obviously. Yeah. Because I mean, they may be looking for an ROI. There's different types of sponsorship that like you have, like the Coca-Cola's and the American Express of the world. And they're probably happy that their name is just everywhere and people see it everywhere. And then you have um, companies and I don't know what this company is, but it may be a smaller company and it needs to turn an ROI a return on investment on what they're investing with you. Um, you know, would they have stayed on with just the affiliate clicks or would that even be worth it to you? I, I think they would have stayed on for the affiliate clicks, but I, I'm looking for more of a, of a paid sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Because, because this is a job and people don't understand how much work goes into producing oh, episodes. Yeah, I can just imagine. Yeah. You know, I, do yeah. The, I do the video and the audio and the graphics and the blog posts and the social media marketing. And it's, it's a job, you know, yeah. it's not, so I'd like to, you know, uh, get paid for the episode so that I can focus more on, on the quality of the, you know, the production and, and maybe hand off the work to somebody else so that I'm not doing it. Although I, I enjoyed doing it, but it would be nice to have someone else do it for me. So yeah, I, right, I, yeah. you know, so, so having you here to, to talk about reverse engineering and sponsorship, I mean, I'm a, I'm a use case, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so did, uh, did you survey your, your audience or the, I mean, if so, if there, if there was a way to look at the clicks that went through and why they didn't proceed and buy, or, you know, maybe it's not the right thing for them, you know, maybe it wasn't a good fit with the, this particular sponsor. Um, yeah, that's a great point. And I, I cannot, figure out who the people are because Bitly doesn't tell you the email addresses. Yeah. But yeah. I do I do agree with you that it might not have been the right fit because of the international piece. So and you and and you it was a cryptocurrency uh, exchange company. So like you had to be into cryptocurrency, you had to want to sign up for a crypto exchange and you had to be in another country or have access to a VPN. Um, it was very specific niche that was not really my my main topic. Yeah, I, I cover yeah. I cover crypto on my channels, but maybe like one out of every ten or twenty episodes. So it's not. I need more of an entrepreneurship or like a business related or a sponsor that, like you said, like an educational type thing because I teach a lot. So yeah, um, I was just about to say it probably wasn't a really right fit sponsor for you. Um, you know, you want something broader. It's like, if you think of them all, you can go to the specialty shop that like does this like one thing, or you can go to Macy's and get like a whole bunch of different things. So you want to find, you know, something in the middle there that's going to resonate with your les listeners and is going to give them value. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. And like I said, I tried to do that, but it wasn't, you know, I, they approached me. Yeah. Which is, which is always awesome. A plus. I mean, that's great. You know, that's always the plus. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to be approached by another sponsor who actually. <laughs> so like, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I have a sponsorship expert here. Um, and so let, let's try some reverse engineering here. Um, let, let's talk about events. First, I want to ask you how, it, you know, the pandemic affected the event business. I mean, I'm assuming most of them kind of shut down last year. Have they started to open back up again? And They've started to open up now, yeah. So they did, like last March, March of 2020, it was like I was on a whole bunch of phone calls with event planners and event owners and, you know, everyone was kind of scrambling. Um, it led to, like, great innovation. There's some great platforms out there now for virtual events and a, a lot of really good stuff. Um, but it did change, um, you know, significantly what was happening. Like, there was so many events that just got cancelled and... It was, it was very scary. I have, um, a, I have a friend, I'm going to shout out Kat Yang in Boston, and she has an event company, and it went under last year because of that as well. She's thinking about starting to, to do events again. So oh, cool, um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to connect you two. Do connect me. I'm actually from Boston. I don't know if you know that. I'm, oh, not, from, I'm not from from Boston, obviously, the accent. But right. yeah, I live in Boston. You're from Ireland, I read, right? I'm from Ireland, yeah. That's yeah, cool. but That's I live cool. in Boston. So that would be very cool. And there's, I belong to a couple of like, different event groups and stuff as well. So it might be... Might be able to get I'm going to connect you guys. Yeah, she she has been. That's a, this is something we should probably talk about too. Um, the, she struggles to find 
the support needed to run the business properly. Most people don't understand the event business. They don't mm -hmm. understand they have sponsorships. They just don't get it. And so therefore they don't help her. Right. So, yeah. So what, 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 you know, what kinds of things can uh, an event planner or an event uh, host um, do to find other people to support what they do? How, how do you find the community? Um, it's, it's there. I mean, there's a, there really is a very strong community there. When I was talking about those calls that I was on back, like back in March, like those were mainly with event owners and events and event planners. So there is a community there and I can definitely plug her into some of those. Um, but you have to kind of go out and find it as well. You know, it's, it's, um, I, I, it, and it's not just events, it's anything. As an entrepreneur, it's like the loneliest place in the world. You're kind of in your own little world. Nobody really knows what you do, especially your family. And, you know, you kind of have to go out there and find your kind of people so that, and, and build up those relationships and um, just foster them. You know, there's a few things I do. I have a call every Friday morning with, uh, it started off with a bunch of people. There's th uh, three other people now who consistently show up. And that's like the most important appointment of my week because it's just, um, I just, I walk away from it with just gaining so much, just, um, you know, I, I can just like throw out the problem. They get what they get me, they get what's going on. Um, you know, just some great brains. So like to kind of find something like that, that you can tap into is super important. Uh, whether it's a mastermind that you join or it's something that you create yourself or, you know, it's just super important to have that. I love productive calls like that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this thing is amazing. It's like at the end of it, I'm like, oh my God, that was just great. That was imagine all the wasted calls you have. And then the one, the one productive call, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I want to pick your brain. What are the top three things someone has to do to reverse engineer a sponsorship for anything? Okay, so they have to think of it in terms of um, making it, a, so you have the sponsor who's looking for access to the, your database, your audience, whatever. You're the host, you're looking to bring value to your audience, also make some money on it. And then what is your audience trying to do? What are they trying to transform into? So you have to find a good marriage of that. So it's not just a case of, you know, I just want somebody to cut me a check, even though that's always nice, but um, you want to really curate the right type of sponsor so that it's going to fit with your audience. Um, so knowing your audience and knowing that avatar is kind of the basis of it as well. So for example, like do you know off the top of your head how many people in your audience are into crypto? I versus, do not know. I, yeah, I versus know. how many are scared of it like myself. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but I, I do know that I definitely have a crypto audience. I'd say maybe 20%. Right, yeah. Maybe 20%. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really hard because we're in this kind of like vacuum trying to decide, like trying to make decisions um, with very little feedback. Like we don't know who's in our audience, who's on our lists. And it's just a lot of just trying to reach out and surveying. And um, and if you're all of you listening, you know, hit Jason up and be like, you know, I think this is great. I think this isn't. It's, it, it, it helps us so much to just get that feedback because otherwise we're, we're just making stuff up, you know, literally because we're trying to figure out what's the best way to do something. I agree. So we I have, have this- trial of error. So I have this, um, this new thing I'm going to try because this is a new format. You're the official first um, guest of this new format. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so I have this like fun little thing before we, we have you, um, you know, do your shameless plug and I, it's like a lightning round. And okay. I'm going to ask you uh, six different things and just quick, quick, you know, real quick answer. Okay. First one is MySpace or Facebook? Facebook. Okay. If you could pick one in a, a new business to succeed no matter what. Would it be traction, the technology, the team, or the revenue? Uh, probably the revenue. Okay. Because the others are working if the revenue, I think. I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. If, you, if you could start your next business in any country, free of charge, covered by the government, what country would it be? I'm going to guess Ireland. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably Ireland. Or maybe France, Europe somewhere. <laughs> France? Okay, Europe. Okay, cool. Uh, which of the companies that are out there are, has your favorite culture? Oh, probably um, from a customer point of view, probably kind of like an Apple. Um, from a learning point of view, I love Digital Marketer. They just give so much, um, and ClickFunnels actually, both of them. They just give so much, but they, I, they just engage me as well because that's what my interest is. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, Neo shows up and he says he'll plug you into the matrix one time. What's the skill that you learn? 
<laughs> which which film it means which I don't know. I wouldn't have a clue. I don't think I've even seen the whole movie. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, that was okay. So the Matrix. Okay, so I know there's like two pills that you take or something. Right, right, right. But, but once, <laughs> well, once you're once you're in the Matrix, so okay, so this is cool. So you're gonna like this. So once you get into the Matrix, you can plug your brain into a computer and you can download um, anything into your brain and you instantly know it. So like in the first moment of the movie, they teach him kung fu and he comes out of the computer and says. I know Kung Fu and he becomes like this Kung Fu master. Oh, wow. So like you can download anything to your brain and you instantly know it. So what would it be? Ooh, wow. Um, I'll probably take the whole minute to think about this. Um, I think technology, that's, that's where I struggle the most now is just like understanding technology. So I think if you could like learn a 2X. So you would, be a, you would learn do. how to be a computer genius basically. Yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm probably okay. Asian, but at least I'd be able to make it work. It's no big deal. All right, and last one is more fun. During the pandemic, what was your favorite show that you binged? Oh, I binged all of them. I actually went back in them as well. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's awful. All the shows. All the shows. Just show me all of them. I had to go back to like the 80s and the 90s too, man. Yeah. I, was, I realized then like I went back and watched things like Weeds and Breaking Bad. And I'm like, these aren't as good as like, I thought they were brilliant the first time I saw them. And right. Then, like second time, like they're so old, you know. <laughs> so I, I did The Office and then I did um, Lois and Clark. Oh, nice. Really nice. Cool yeah. Story. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, all right. So now uh, I just want you to leave everybody with a little bit of inspiration, wisdom, encouragement for starting a business, whether it's event-based or sponsorship-based and, and like what you think they should do to be a better entrepreneur. Um, so I think go for it. I think um, one of my, my um, sayings is seek the swift sword. So I see a lot of people want to do stuff and they get caught in indecision. Um, make a decision and move forward. If it's wrong, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, you, can, you can course navigate and keep going. It's when you get stuck in the, I don't know, and I don't know how to start or whatever, just, just start, just do something. I love and it. every day do something more. <laughs> That's good. That's a good advice. Is everyone listening, do it. Just, just, like, like just Mikey, do it. Like Nike, right? <laughs> awesome. Now, where can people find Sponsored you? Sponsored by Nike. Sorry. Oh, I just got hey. your sponsor. <laughs> if anyone from Nike is listening. <laughs> That'd be I'll, awesome. I'll, I'll, wear your, I'll wear your clothing, right? I'll wear your Yeah, clothing. yeah, yeah. Cool. And where can people find out what you do and uh, more about your business and if they want to reach out to you? Sure. So um, I actually put together a small uh, one sheet uh, training. It's like a 15 minute training on how to find some low hanging fruit sponsors. So it's at connectedsponsors.com forward slash finding sponsors. And I'm going to spell all that out. So C-O-N-N-E-C-T-E-D-S-P-O-N-S-O-R-S.com forward slash finding sponsors. Um, that will get you on my email list. I respond to my emails. I love having conversations because like back to our previous conversation, that's how you learn. Otherwise you're in a vacuum trying to provide content for people and you just don't know what they want. Awesome. This was very, very insightful, even for me, because I learned a lot about reverse engineering sponsorships and hopefully it'll help me land one. So thank you, Sheila. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> awesome. And thank uh, you so much. Hope everyone listening learned something and we will see you all in next week's episode. Mm -hmm.